Hello viewers, 4 DIYers here, back on the tour video for everyone. Now in this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to replace the rubber grommets on your washer tank on a BMW E39. Now this particular car I am working on here is a 1997 BMW 540i, which is a sedan and is also equipped with headlight washers. If you notice here, we do have an extra pump and that does feed the headlight washers. Now if you do have a touring or a wagon, you'll see there's an extra space here. Uh, that'll be filled up with a pump as well, and that'll be supplying washer fluid to the rear hatch. Now, if you just have the standard uh, windshield washer vehicle, you will just have this pump only. So you may need to check, depending what type of vehicle you do have, whether you need grommets for the rest of these pumps or not. Now, with this being a uh, left-hand drive vehicle, the pump is located on the passenger side. Now, this may differentiate for vehicles that are right-hand drive. If somebody could let me know a little information about that, possibly post it in the comments below, that would be greatly appreciated. Normally what the common problem is, is you'll find that if you do add washer fluid to your vehicle, you'll find that it leaks out on the passenger side and there will be a small puddle that forms right underneath directly the vehicle here. Now the puddle may uh, change in areas a little bit because we do have a belly pan on the bottom here, so it may run off to the more of the inside, the outside, or maybe a little further back or a little forward, it does depend. Now this is located behind the fender liner, now you can either go ahead and remove the fender liner or just simply bend it up. Now you do have to also remove the wheel on the vehicle, which I've done already, and I already have the fender liner removed. Now make sure you do jack the car up and you do have a jack stand holding it up as well just to secure it so we don't have any hazards. Now if you're wondering how to remove the fender liner, I'll include that in the description below because I have removed the fender on this vehicle, and in that tutorial there it does show how to remove the fender liner. Now once you've removed the liner, you then gain access to all this here. Now considering the washer fluid has leaked out of the tank, we don't have to worry about uh, draining the system here. Now if you do have still washer fluid in the tank, you can go ahead and drain the system. Just simply put a bucket underneath and disconnect this line here and it'll just come out. Now as for this line here, I just pull it straight out. Now you possibly can leave it on, but it just gives me a little more room to work with. And I'm also able to rotate the pump as well. Now I did remove the harness on the top here. And going to the inside here, we do have a sensor. And what I've done as well is I've removed the harness here. So on this one here, you'll have just a little tab on the back side. You just have to pull back. And for this one here, you just simply pull straight up while depressing the tabs on the top on each side. You'll see you have one on that side and you'll have one on that side. Now, as you can see, I've already moved the other pump as well. As with that pump there, all I did was simply pull the line off as well. Then for the plug on the top side, slightly different than the first pump. All you want to do is just depress the tab on the front side here, pull straight up and it should just come right out. And next we can move on to the pumps. As for the pumps here, what you want to do is both of them, I faced them outwards. So I had just a little bit of a leveraging point here to work with, which would be where the other line goes on to. What we want to do is just twist it back and forth and pull it up like so. These are fairly easy to come out. I didn't have to apply a whole lot of pressure. Then once you get those out, you can then work your way onto the rubber grommets. As for the rubber grommets here, they'll still stay in the tank here. Now they are fairly easy to work with as well. What we want to do is just simply start from the front side, just push it inward like so. Just relieves the pressure on the outside and then you can just pull it straight up. Now I didn't use any tools for removing the pump, the plugs, uh, the lines or these rubber grommets. Just did everything by hand and it was fairly easy to work with. Now next what we'll do is we'll move on to the uh, installation with the new grommets on this here. Now on the back side here for the sensor, the sensor, I can't exactly twist the sensor because it does have a alignment tab on the side here so it ensures the sensor is placed in the correct orientation. But what I did with this here is just, you're able to twist it just ever so slightly. You do have a bit of play with that tab there but I just uh, made even pressure, rocked it back and forth, and then pulled it straight out. Now just to show you what the sensor does look like here, you can see we do have a float level here, which does go up and down, and that'll be facing towards the bottom side. And when we do pull that out, just want to watch so we just don't uh, break this off or it doesn't happen to pop off where it falls into the tank. Now as for removing the rubber grommet on the other pump here, considering it does sit lower than the opposite pump, it will have a little strainer on there. You want to make sure when you are removing that grommet, that strainer doesn't fall inside the tank. Now if it does, you do have to remove the tank and then you will have to retrieve it in that manner unless you do have a mechanics claw which you can stick in the inside. Now as for reinstallation, you do want to make sure the surfaces are clean where the rubber grommets are going. Uh, that ensures that no dirt's getting into the tank and it won't cause any sealing issues. And we also want to minimize the amount of dirt as much as possible in the tank because again that can uh, have some havoc on the washer motors and dirt can get inside and then destroy them and then you'll have to replace them. And when reinstalling them, you can just go ahead and reinstall the grommets and the motors dry. 
but uh, maybe a little bit of issues there with binding up it might give you a little bit of hard time so therefore you can go ahead and maybe use even a silicone spray or just a little bit of soap now I wouldn't recommend normally using a grease or petroleum jelly or Vaseline uh, because what can happen here is the petroleum jelly or Vaseline can go ahead and dry out those rubbers and the other issue I also have to worry about between the uh, those materials is that they are thicker and the fluid doesn't tend to wash those away so if they do kind of get stuck in the strainer or around the sensor say or even in the motors themselves they can uh, cause some issues. You can see I already got the sensor back in. You want to make sure that is in the correct orientation where the float falls towards the bottom. Now once you've finished reinstalling the pumps here, you can see I just have the last pump to plug in there. You can then go ahead. What I would do before I do put on the liner is I would go ahead and fill up the system just to ensure there is any leaks. If there is any leaks, then I would take the proper procedures in order to correct those. After the rubber grommets are replaced, there shouldn't be any issues. Possibly these uh, plastic lines may cause an issue if they have stretched over time. So therefore you'd have to find a replacement for those. So this concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also, please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you for watching.